Hello, I'm Ken Kuchek. I'm the event supervisor for uh, Charged Up. And today we have coaches training for the 2024 season. Um, goal here today is to just present uh, an overview of the event and uh, try to give all you coaches, uh, you know, as much information as possible to, uh, to coach your students. Okay, uh, we can start by uh, Charged Up Resources. Uh, there's a lot of information out on the website, so I highly encourage you to go to the Macomb Science Olympiad uh, website, and uh, specifically the Charged Up event. Uh, there you will find uh, a copy of the event rules. You will find a study guide, which uh, goes into a lot of technical detail on, on electricity and some uh, electrical theory, um, try to answer, I, I tried to address a lot of questions that have come up uh, over the years and questions that I get at the events, try to address them. Um, also on the website, you're gonna find this presentation. It'll, it's recorded and it'll be posted on the website probably uh, later this week. Uh, there's also a handout for this event uh, that'll provide, again, some uh, more information on uh, technical questions uh, about electricity and uh, some of the other topics. There's videos, uh, videos of, again, this, this uh, training, there's videos of uh, past training and a previous workshop with example problems which is again, very helpful to get familiar with the types of questions you may see on the, at the event. And again, there's sample uh, workshop questions and answers. Uh, there's a FAQ. So there's just uh, the FAQ contains uh, rule clarifications. If anyone ever posts a question, um, or if anyone ever asks me a question, it'll get posted to the FAQ so everyone uh, has that same information and that same clarification as far as any rules or the event itself. And lastly, on the website, there's a link to a quick start kit. So the quick start kit is a, uh, is a box of uh, parts, you know, that we use a lot of different pieces and parts for this event, batteries, battery holders, light bulbs, wires, um, LEDs, and so this uh, this quick start kit gives you those components so you can get familiar with them and practice ahead of time. Okay, let's just uh, briefly go over the, the rules. Um, so this event is electricity and uh, electrical concepts. And so we focus on DC circuits. So DC circuits is more battery voltage circuits versus AC is what's inside your house. So while some theory may cover AC, but the hands-on practical uh, application of uh, building and analyzing circuits will be DC circuits. Um, goes over conductors, diodes, voltage, current, resistance, um, schematic drawings, um, using a meter, uh, a volt ohm meter, or a multimeter is another name for it, uh, electrical sources, and, and of course, electrical safety. So the team size is one or two students. You know, typically it's two, but sometimes a, a, a team has just one. Um, students need to understand terms like conductors, insulators, open circuit versus short circuit, normally open switches versus normally closed switches, series circuits, parallel circuits, uh, and series parallel circuits. Um, meter re using a meter and knowing what setting to put the meter on to measure voltage or measure current or measure resistance. Um, then we have diodes, sources of electricity, and again, electrical safety.
Other parts to the rules. The format of the event is it's set up in seven stations. So it's kind of a row of desks, a row of seven desks, and each desk is a separate station. And the students will rotate through each of the seven stations. So everyone's going to get an equal amount of time. It's either two and a half minutes at districts or three minutes at the county event at each station. So again, everyone, for example, everyone starts at a random station and then they we will start the event at the end of say two and a half minutes we'll tell everyone to stop and move to the next table so if you're at table one you go to two two goes to three you kind of go in a big circle and again everyone will will complete all seven stations and have an equal amount of time at each of those stations so the first five stations are uh, using a zip grade form and that's you know zip grade are the the bubbles fill in the fill in the bubble with a pencil so it's true false questions and multiple choice questions so there's one point questions will have two options like true false uh, two point questions will have uh three to five options and that would be your multiple choice questions there's also some zero point questions they're tiebreakers and so they're more of a, an essay whereas the student will have to answer a question by writing down the answer on their answer sheet um, i would suggest you recommend to them that don't waste time on the tiebreaker unless you've completed all of the questions at that particular station. So, because it's more important to get as many questions completed and correct as possible, the tiebreakers only kick in if you're, you have a tie score with another student and we're trying to break that tie. Uh, the sixth station is drawing a circuit. So they'll get an eight and a half by 11 blank piece of paper and the uh, question will tell them to, in words, to draw a particular circuit. They will get partial credit on this. And so if they get, say, the battery drawn correctly, they'll get points for the battery. If they, if they get the switch, the correct switch drawn correctly and hooked up correctly, they'll get points for that. If it's uh, got lights and it's again drawn and wired correctly, they'll get points for that. And if you get everything right, there's a bonus uh, on top of uh, in addition to the partial credits for each piece. The last station, station seven, is constructing a circuit. So here you're using the components provided. We're going to provide all the components. We're, you're going to get batteries, battery holders, uh, wires, lights, LEDs, uh, switches, all different type switches. Uh, and, and so the students will build the circuit as described in on the question sheet. Here, they've got two choices, and, and they really, you need to teach them to be honest with themselves, you know, because there's going to be easy questions and hard ones. You, you choose one or the other, not both. So depending on your skill level, you know, you may want to choose the easy, or if you're very experienced and you've done this event in the past and you're, you're, you're uh, very capable, then attempt the hard one. But again, not both. And uh, so the easy question is 20 points where you're going to be building one or two basic circuits. They're just simpler circuits. Uh, the hard one is worth 40 points. However, it's a, it's a complex circuit and it's gonna have series, both series and parallel components to it. 
It'll use switches uniquely. It'll use double throw switches, which are a, a more complex switch. So again, it all you really need to choose wisely when you do the construct a circuit. Are the two kids just building one, or are they each build their own? Well, that's uh, that's a good question. That's up to them. Uh, so if they're choosing to do the easy one, and let's say there's two circuits uh, in the easy one, it is perfectly fine for them to work independently side by side and each build a different circuit. However, they cannot do both the easy and the hard. Okay, so that was it for rules. Any questions at this point on just the rules before we get into other material of the more of the technical and types of questions that you'll see at the different stations? So I guess it's kind of a follow up to what you had mentioned earlier. Um, I know they can only choose to do the easy or the hard. Um, I'm just wondering, can they build them to see which one will work and then cho like choose which one to be graded, I guess? I mean, yes. I mean, in theory, I'll say yes. However, two and a half minutes is a, a very short amount of time. And, and uh, the reality is uh, teams typically, you know, barely have enough time to, to finish doing one or the other. So I, I don't think it's realistic to to be able to try to b build both of them, but they can. Okay. They can. Okay. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other questions, we'll move on and we'll get into we'll just time for questions as we as we go. Um so I'm going to try to go over some of the more important things that I commonly see uh, students make mistakes on. And, and so just so you can relay that information to them and, and help them uh, follow some of these uh, uh, items to, to get the maximum points that, that they deserve uh, during the event. So batteries. Think of a battery, a battery, the schematic symbol of a battery is two lines. One line is longer than the other. As you can see, the left side has a longer line and then the right side has a shorter line, vertical line. So the, the longer line is the positive side of the battery. The shorter vertical line is the negative side of the battery. They must put the polarity of the battery. So they must put the plus minus uh, symbols on the battery. So you uh, gave two examples of incorrect uh, schematic symbols. So if they just forget to put the plus minus, it's going to be incorrect. And if they put two, two lines that are the same length, it's going to be without polarity, it's going to be incorrect. So they must be careful when they're drawing the batteries. Uh, diodes are kind of a similar thing. They, they must show the polarity. So a diode, as you see in the symbol here, it's a triangle with a, a vertical line at the point of the triangle. And then the polarity is as noted here. So on the base of the triangle is positive. The vertical line is negative. Um, so again, encourage them to be diligent about putting these polarities on these components because if they don't, they will not get credit for it. Because, it, you know, it, 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 it's technically not correct. Uh, LEDs are a very similar thing. An LED is a diode, but an LED is a, is a diode that uh, gives off light. So it's a very similar sy symbol. So it has a, a triangle, however it's filled in, but we're not as worried about that as, as much. So it's a triangle 
with uh, uh, a vertical line and the plus minus polarity uh, designations. However, the LED, you use two little arrows pointing up on an angle, and that um, means that it's giving off light. So the next section is switches. Switches, there are four types of switches, or before we get into that, there's, there's normally open switches, which is, think of a switch at your house. When uh, a switch is off, in the off position, it's normally open. And open means uh, it is not conducting electricity. And so the, the action to, to operate that switch would be to close the switch. And that's why the arrow is showing it going from open to close. Then the next one you see is normally closed. So normally closed means that that switch is currently conducting electricity. It's in the closed position. And when, if you operate that switch, you would open it. And that's why the arrow is pointing from closed to the open position. So they need to know the difference between open and closed and showing, and showing that the symbol with the arrow uh, so they need to use the correct um, schematic symbol. Other ones, you have single pull, single throw switches, and that's similar to the last one we used. So that's like your typical household switch where um, it's, you're closing the switch and you're connecting basically two wires together. You could have a single pull double throw so s p d t double throw means that that uh, switch can go in one of two positions and a good example of this type switch is uh, the, the your the switches that you have on your stair on your stairs you typically have one switch at the top of the stairs one switch at the bottom of the stairs and they use single pull double throw or dual throw switches. Again, the students just need to know the difference between these switches. And so when they're asked questions or asked to build a circuit or draw a circuit, they can use the correct schematic symbol. Uh, last one on this list is a light bulb. That's the schematic symbol. So it's kind of a, a loop in the middle and with a circle around it. And again, as long as it's close to this, it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. I mean, as long as it's close to a loop in the middle with a circle, you know, they're gonna get credit for it. Um, other items. So there's some questions that uh, are what's called circuit prediction. So the students will see a drawing like this and without the answer, of course, and, uh, and they will be asked questions about that circuit. And each one in the box is, is a, a separate uh, question. So the first one, what you see is a series circuit. You have two batteries in series connected with two light bulbs in series. And so the correct answer on this one, it was a multiple choice question. I didn't show all the all the other answers, but the correct answer is it's a series circuit. So the next one, number two, you have two batteries in parallel connected to two light bulbs in parallel. So the difference, series means they're in line with one another. Parallel means they're next to each other. Uh, so three is an example of an open circuit. So an open circuit, if you have a switch that's in the open or off position, it's technically an open circuit. When you close that switch, it's now a short circuit. 
So that's the difference between question three and question four. So question three is an open circuit because the switch is in open and there's no electricity flowing in that circuit. The number four is a short circuit and you know, sometimes people think a short circuit is a bad thing, and sometimes it is a bad thing, but we don't always consider a short circuit a bad thing. A short circuit is just a closed circuit, and it allows electricity to flow through the circuit. However, a short circuit can be a bad thing, of course, if like the plus side of a battery is shorted to the minus side of a battery. That would not be a good thing. So other things that you might see in circuit prediction is the question may ask, will the light be lit as shown? So if a light bulb in number three, if they're asked, will that light be on? In the current position, in the current switch position, that light will be off. And if you look at number four, that light bulb, actually, it's a short circuit because of the switch. It's shorting the batteries out, so that light bulb will also be off. And the batteries are opposed to each other. If you notice, the the two negatives of the battery are connected to one another, and that would not be uh, proper. So again, the students really have to take their time, look at the circuit, you know, try to determine, you know, what switches are being used. Um, is there anything wrong like this one where there is a short circuit across the battery uh, when they answer these questions? So uh, some other examples of questions they may see, uh, circuits. So question number five uh, has to do with the top circuit you see on the right side. So which bulbs will light when switch X is closed? So when switch X is closed, that will light up light A. That will complete that portion of the circuit. and you see switch B, B, or I'm sorry, switch Y. Switch Y is still in the open position, so that means light bulb B will not light. So the correct answer is A, light A will be on. Number six has to do with the circuit on the bottom right. Switch S1 controls which lights in circuit two. So switch S1, if you look at it, it is controlling the flow of, of electricity, of the flow of current from the batteries to all the lights, L1, L2, and L3. So that's the, the right answer. Six is D, all the lights. Number seven, what type circuit is shown in circuit two? This is a series circuit. You have two batteries in series connected through a switch to three light bulbs in series. So the correct answer is A, series circuit. Okay. Next, we have some examples of true-false uh, questions. So eight, nine, and 10. So first one is, it's never safe to touch a downed power line. And that's true. You should never touch a downed power line or get anywhere near it. Number nine, amps are the unit used to measure the amount of electric current. That's correct. That's true. Amps are for current, volts are for voltage, and ohms are for resistance. Okay, number 10. A short wire has higher resistance than a long wire. 
That's false. It's not additive. It's, it's actually an inverse relationship. So a shorter wire will have lower resistance. Um, meters, number 11. Meters, are, this is a multiple choice question. To measure voltage in a standard household electrical socket, an electrician would use what setting? So again, we're measuring voltage and we're measuring it in a standard household circuit, which is AC. So our, our correct answer is A, voltage AC, versus there is a setting voltage DC, but that would be used when you're measuring battery voltage. Uh, number 12. What's the resistance of the an aluminum rod? And they're asking for its approximate. So here again, teach the, teach the students how to do multiple choice questions, you know, the, in, and the way they should do that is start by not necessarily trying to find the right answer right away, but try to eliminate the wrong answers. So the first one is resistance, or I mean, we're trying to find resistance. So we know resistance is ohms. So the first the A is volts. So we know that can't be the right answer. B is also volts. We know that can't be right. C is milliamps. That's current. So we know that can't be right. So now we're left with D and E, which are both ohms. So those are the only two possible answers that could be correct. So a piece of aluminum is metallic. And so it will have a very low resistance. So when they compare these two, 110 ohms versus 0.02 ohms, 0.02 is very low. So that would be the correct answer here. Um, at one of the stations, the students will have to build their own circuit tester. And these, these uh, photos here show a, a sample circuit tester. So they use a battery and a light bulb with some wires. And then they touch the two leads, the yellow and the black lead, they touch that to different objects. For example, a piece of paper, a piece of wood, uh, a screw, uh, to determine the conductivity of uh, different objects. And here the question is, an aluminum rod is what? Is it a conductor? Is it an insulator or both? Well, the correct answer is, I mean, they can, they don't necessarily have to use their circuit tester to answer this question. They can if they want to, but you know, if a student is sharp enough to get the information right from the words, they can skip using the tester. Here it says it's aluminum rod. Aluminum is metallic. Metallic is a conductor. So they can right away get the answer with conductor. However, if they're unsure, let's say they were unsure of whether aluminum was a metal or not, they could use their circuit tester and touch the the yellow wire to one end of the aluminum rod, the black wire to the opposite end, they would see their light would turn on, so they would then know that that aluminum is conducting electricity and is a conductor, where an insulator would not conduct electricity. For example, if the same question was asking you about a piece of paper, they could use their circuit tester on the paper and see that the light would not light and know that it's an insulator. So then the next uh, section, like question 14 here, there's cards that are made. They're called mystery cards. And they'll, they, I'm showing you an example of how some of these cards might be constructed. And so behind the inside the card, 
the 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 metallic circles are connected from one side to the other and but the students can't see that so that's covered up but i'm just showing you how they're made so you can make some of these at at uh, at home if you want at, for for uh, just for practice but the students will see the picture on on the left so they'll have some numbers they'll have some letters and they will have to determine like what does item 14, a uh, button 14, connect to? And they can use their circuit tester. They could put the like the black wire on, on button number 14 and touch A. Does it light? No. Touch B. Does it light? No. Touch C. Does it light? I'm just giving you examples. C, let's say it lights, then they would know, okay, 14 is connected to C. Um, so, but again, they can do this very quickly. They can touch on 14 and real quickly go A, B, C, D, E, A, and, and see which one lights up. Because this whole event is about speed. The, the faster they are, the more questions they're gonna get completed. Uh, so in this particular example, C, C was the correct answer. Um, they're going to be using multimeters. And so a multimeter can measure voltage AC, it can measure voltage DC, it can measure current. So amps AC and DC and ohms. And so the meter we use is, is a standard Sears meter. Uh, and so they need to know the, the center dial here turns, so they need to know what position to put the meter when they're measuring something. So the first question here, example question, is what setting is used to measure the voltage of a battery? So again, the keywords here are voltage and battery. So voltage is V, is, is V on the meter, and then a battery, is DC, not AC. So they're looking for voltage DC. Um, some meters will actually have a BAT setting. And if you look at uh, this meter in the bottom right-hand corner of the circle, it's called BAT. And so some meters have show BAT instead of volts DC. It's the same thing. Uh, so in this case, the correct answer is BAT. The, uh, uh, the, another correct answer could be volts DC. Um, next one is they could use a, me a meter to actually measure the voltage of a battery. And so this is the question, what is the voltage of a battery? So again, they, they could either use the meter if they wanted to, or if they already know the answer, all batteries are 1.5 volts. Your, your double A's, your triple A's, your C's, your D's, they're all 1.5 volts. They just have a different capacities they, or, or a longer life. Um, so again, it's good for them to know that batteries are 1.5 volts because there may be other questions on batteries and voltage. Okay, resistors. So resistors uh, look like these two drawings. They're small electrical components uh, with two wires sticking out of each, a wire sticking out of each end and they have colored bands. And these colored bands actually are an indication of the, res the, the actual resistance value for that component. So in the, the students will, will get the color code in uh, districts. And county, it's, uh, you know, they may or may not get the color code chart uh, at county. So at county, they actually need to memorize this. Um, so the first band 
in this example uh, on the right, you have brown, black, brown, and then, then you have a, a gold one at the far right. Let's focus on the, the three bands at the, on the left side. So brown, black, brown. So you use brown to find out the first number. The fir so the, in this chart, the first digit, you go down to brown and that's a one. So then you, for the second digit is black. Go in the chart, go down, black happens to be zero. Then the third band is what's called the multiplier. And so here it's brown. Go in the chart, go down to the brown row, and that's times 10. So this particular uh, resistor is one, one, and then times 10, so 110. And then the the gold band on the far right is what's called the tolerance. And that's just how tightly they're manufactured and how, how much uh, room for error that there is. So really this would be 110 ohms plus or minus 5%. So uh, if we go to question 17, uh, a question, a typical question might be, in the first two bands, blue stands for what? If we go down to the chart, go all the way down the column until we find blue, and we see blue means the number six. Okay, now let's do another example. Not question 18. The resistance of a resistor shown below is what? So again, we have green, blue, yellow. So if we go to the chart, that's a five, that's a six, and then we have times, yellow is times 10,000. So that would be 56, 560,000 is the correct answer. So again, they just need to get familiar with the, the resistor chart and how to read the chart, the, you know, and how to read, it's primarily the three bands uh, on the left that uh, we're focused on. Uh, so the first digit, the second digit, and then the multiplier. Okay. This is uh, an, a, an example of drawing a circuit, which would be station number six. So they would not get the answer. So that what you see, the circuit you see drawn is the answer. So th think of them not having that in front of them and all they have is this text description on the left. And that's what they have to use to draw the circuit. And the correct answer is what's shown on, on the right. So. The description says, you know, using the correct schematic symbols, and this is where it's real important, they have to use the correct schematic symbols. Uh, they can't, uh, you know, a battery is not a rectangular box. I see that all the time. So they need to use the battery symbol, which is a long line, a, two parallel lines, one's longer than the other, plus with the plus and minus uh, signs on them. And a light bulb is a loop with a circle. Uh, again, so they, they're here, the, using the correct symbol is very important. They will get partial credit on this. So if the batteries are correct and the lights are not correct, well, they'll get partial credit then. Um, so here, the information that's given is there's two batteries in series, connected in series to two light bulbs in series. So again, based on that text description, this is the correct answer. And so construct the circuit. Um, the information provided is going to be again the text description 
or it could even be a picture like you see uh, on the right. But the text description says there's three batteries in series. And again, they need the, if they're, or they're, they're using the correct symbols in the answer shown on the right. Connected in series to two LEDs. So the, but the two LEDs are in parallel. So you have three batteries then with a single line going to two LEDs. And the LEDs again have polarity. So the LEDs have to be hooked up correctly uh, when they build their circuit. And then a single pole, one single pole, single throw switch controls both LEDs. So the switch would have to be in this position um, provided. So in this case, it's not asking you whether it's open, a normally open circuit or a normally closed circuit. So they have an option here of the switch, whether it's in the open position or closed position. So both actually would be correct as far as the switch. So in this particular case, the students have to use the components provided. There's gonna be plenty of batteries, plenty of LEDs, lots of wires, light bulbs, uh, switches, uh, things they have to be careful for is there are four different type switches. They need to choose the right one. It's a very, very common mistake that they choose the wrong switch. So work with them on the four type switches and and make sure they use the correct switch being asked for in the in the question. Um, when they're done, they need to raise their hand because I need to examine their circuit to determine whether it's correct or not and to give them partial credit as needed. Um, however, they get one chance at this. If I if I look at it and tell them, you know, that something may be incorrect, they cannot fix it. They have one chance. So before they raise their hand, they should, if they have time left over, double check their work, make sure it's correct, then raise their hand and I'll check and grade their work. Um, I actually, it says, the slide said there is no partial credit that there is partial credit as long as I have enough volunteer help for the rest of the event. If I don't have enough volunteer help, then, then there may not be enough time to issue partial credit, but that will be the, um, told to the students at the event. But typically there is partial credit. Okay. That is it for the presentation. So, I mean, we can take uh, any other questions that uh, that you all have at this time. I got a question. Got a question. Yes. Um, um, is it true is it that true each that team, team will only have one, one, one answer sheet? Um, Yes, there is one answer sheet. However, the answer sheet consists of three pieces of paper. So the first piece of paper is the zip grade. The second piece of paper is an eight and a half by 11 blank sheet of paper for drawing of the circuit. And then the third piece of paper is, uh, actually, I, I take that back. That was, uh, those are the, there is a third piece of paper for their, um, um tie break questions so yes there I, there is one answer sheet but it's, it consists of three pieces of paper okay um i had a question um having to do with the resistors um when you had mentioned i think it was like slide 12 um, you had mentioned that the brown band was one and the black band was zero and the multiplier was 10. Yes. So wouldn't that make it 100 or 
you because you had said it was 110 and i guess i was just kind of confused how well it's uh think of the one one is 11 times 10 11 times 10 is you're really adding a zero you know i mean that's when you look at the multiplier that's the easiest way to look at it is if it's black you're not adding any zeros brown you're adding one zero red you're adding two zeros and you know as in and it's, it's same as you go down the list so it'd be 11 times 10 would be 110. right where's the 11 coming from yeah and that, that doesn't sound right so it's the um, one one so where's one one though we see okay. a one with the brown but then the the second digit oh, is black which is zero I said 110. It should be 100. I, oh, okay. Okay. okay, good. <laughs> yeah, my, my bad. Sorry. No yeah, problem. So, I thought I was missing something. You know, so. if it would have been uh, brown, yeah. brown, 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 brown yes. would have been 110. Oh, but, okay. My, I'm yeah. sorry. Brown, no. black, brown <laughs> is 100. It's all new to me. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, hey, Ken, I have a, I have a question. Um, I joined late because of the storm. We lost power and we just had it restored. Um, was able to call in. Um, will we have access? Will you be able to send us out this practice test? Actually, this whole uh, um, this whole presentation it will be on the website in a PDF format, and it will okay. also be on the website in a uh, in the video format, so you can rewatch the whole video from the beginning. Awesome. So Excellent. both yeah, I see someone's recording it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. So if you go um, to Macomb, real quick, if you go to macombso.org and then go to elementary, <clears throat> you'll get a listing of all the events and it will be posted under charged up. Give us a couple of days at least uh, to edit all the material for all 17 events and put it out there. OK, thank you. Um, I had a, another question. So when a switch is being put into the circuit, does it matter if it's on the positive or the negative side of the battery? Like, is there a preferred side to place the switch on or it doesn't matter as long as you break the circuit? It, it doesn't matter. It works in, in both ways and both ways would be correct. Um, so I have another question back to the resistor. The the uh, the color coding chart, are the students required to memorize or will they have that chart available to interpret the uh, the resistance? For for the district events, uh, they will have uh, a copy of the chart. OK, uh, for the county events, it uh, it's it. I'm, it depends. Uh, they may get the chart or they should be prepared to uh, memorize the chart. Basically, they need to memorize the order of the colors. And I had one last question. Um, when I know there was a portion of the test where you can build a circuit tester. Do they have designated time to build that circuit tester or do you just um, you have to build it when you're given the questions? Yes, uh, there everything will be when they arrive at that particular station. Uh, all the components will be disconnected and separated. And so they will need to assemble that circuit tester and you can do it, you know, very quickly. Uh, and that's where working as a team can help have one person start building the circuit tester as soon as they get there, while the other person maybe starts looking at what the what the first question is. But yes, they will have to build it and uh, they can do it again very quickly. But again, practicing that. Uh, at home or at school is a good thing so they can do this as quickly as possible. Thank you. OK, if there's no other questions, uh, again, I'd like to point you to the website. Uh, 
there's all good information here. And again, there's a FAQ uh, on the website. So if anyone does po uh, pose a question, I will answer all those questions as quickly as possible. And every question will get posted to the FAQ so everyone can see the, the response to every single question posed. And so that's it. Thank you for uh, participating Great. today and uh, good luck at the event. Great, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Ken. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Ken. Bye-bye.